Okay, so welcome to my talk about um, how I think a modern Yocto project setup can look like. And I want to present you um, my wishes for an embedded system and an embedded product, IoT product, whatever. Um, how this uh, can look like and what things you should uh, think before uh, building something on an example of our internal um, meeting room information system. But first, where well, my name is Anna. I'm an embedded system dev at Innovex. That's a middle-sized German company. I mostly do Linux kernel, Yocto, embedded Android, and so on. And if I'm not enough uh, filled with this, I'm studying electrical engineering besides my other uh, grades in my spare time. And so let's start. And first, let's have a look at the story behind um, the meeting room information screens at Innovex. Um, as I said, we are uh, mostly not so small company anymore. And we have currently around 25 meeting rooms shared over um, five cities and a lot of people. For Corona, we had a lot of meetings and a constant struggle that uh, no one knows is this meeting room blocked by someone or not, because we had previously this not so great um, displays in the left there and it didn't work well. So it was hard to figure out is this room blocked or not. Didn't integrate well with the calendar. And if you booked a room, it was constantly um, used by someone else. So in 2015, we started um, to build our own solution um, as a student project based on Android things because it was new, it was cool, it was perfect for a student product. And we uh, came up with the thing you see in the right. And this solution worked fairly well and was run um, until end of 21 because it happens first always happened to uh, Google products, it was killed. Google killed a lot of their products. And so um, not, not, ex uh, not really uh, unexpected Android things was not that successful. They fought and it was completely shut down in 2022. So we need a new solution for this. And we did a complete reboot. Um, we started to think again on the green, uh, uh, green um, thing. And thought about what expertise do we have internally and what do we wish for a system that will run over a long time to have a modern and maintainable and a pretty well working stable system. Um, so we came to our wish list. We wanted a full stack patchability. So if there's a, a bug in any layer of this um, stack, we want to be able to fix. So property solutions, um, closed source, were not what we want again. Android Things was, by the way, closed source um, for most parts. You want version control. I think this should be um, normal in current software de uh, development, even for embedded. We want uh, reproducible builds. It does not need to be binary um, reproducible for us but at least it should be um, nearly the same on each build. 
we want um, some solution that can be long term maintainable. Um, as you see, um, the first try of this um, internal product run for seven years and we hope the current solution will run even longer. And even if it's only um, an internal solution currently, we want proper license and version management. It's not only about the licenses because um, the versions are um, important to us anyway, because we want to be able to check what um, components do we use in which version and are they um, vulnerable to some CVEs. Um, as a lot of our engineers do also Android embedded, we are known and love, uh, known to and love the Android update mechanism. We love AB updates, we love image based updates. We don't want, um, don't want um, package updates on embedded products because they mess up everything. And as we said, we have uh, fairly a lot of these meeting rooms and fairly a lot of these displays. So we want a nice release management over the air because it's not really um, doable to update all these displays manually. We want a continuous integration system, not as far uh, um, sophisticated as the one um, presented in the last talk, but at least we want continuous integration and be sure every change is tested and works. And all in all, we want a vendor independent system on all levels. So if anything breaks, if any um, vendor of a component um, is not able to uh, do this anymore or retires the component, we want to be able um, to switch to another one. And so let's have a, a closer look on our wish list. Uh, yes. Now it's on the next slide. The first four points, false, uh, full stack patchability, version control, reproducible builds, and long-term maintainability. The easy solution for us is just use Yocto. The hardware we had can be uh, reused, no investigation, uh, no invest needed for this. And all points of uh, our wish list are fulfilled by design. And if we would have decided for a build route, I would not speak here. Um, and a side note to managing Yocto, as you have seen in some talks previously, um, Managing Yocto can be hard. There are several ways uh, out there. You can uh, use GitHub repos. I personally hate this variant a lot because for me it's um, a constant uh, source of errors. It's so uh, easy to, uh, to get this wrong, to do errors with this. You can uh, use Android manifests and the repo tool. It's a bit better, but Android repo and the manifest in XML are really crap. And it's really not nice to read and maintain. And as you have seen before in other talks, there's a new star on the Yocto uh, maintaining uh, world cast. And um, in, in spring this year, Josef introduced me to CAS and I really loved it. I moved all of my Yocto projects to CAS because it's really cool. It's easy readable syntax, it's clear. It's really easy for non Yocto people to get starting with it. And because of it comes already with a container, 
you can just give it to these people. Um, you can use it in the CI. It's really cool and it makes handling Yocto a lot easier. Um, and next point on our wish list, we want a proper um, license and version management. Um, yes, we want to be license compliant, but that's not the most important point in uh, internally used product that's uh, not, uh, not released anywhere else but we want to know exactly what we ship in our image. We want a component name, we want a version, we want licenses to check for, um, for CVEs. And what this is, is exactly the software bill of materials. There are several um, uh, ways to achieve a software bill of materials. The one is Cyclone DX. One is SPDX and there's also SWIT, I think. And here our decision is pretty easy. SPDX is um, from the Linux Foundation 2 as Yocto is. It's well integrated with Yocto. It's easy, just inherit, create SPDX. So it's the easiest way and we go with this. Next points on our wish list were the secure and sa uh, stable update mechanism and release management over the air. Um, to be more exact, we want image based updates on embedded systems. Package based is um, pretty much an own hell. You have different states on different devices. That's not really maintainable. We want AB updates um, as state of the art with a rollback and recovery mechanism if something uh, went wrong. And yes, this happens pretty often. Um, for us, it's the gold standard. And um, updates and update mechanisms and update servers are hard. We want a matching server implementation. We don't have to work on. Um, it should allow us starting updates for different groups of devices. We want over the air updates and a bit like the Android Things console. Um, a thing that just worked and makes it easy to work with these embedded devices. There are several uh, implementations out there. Some big ones are Rauk, Manda, and as we update, our winner is Manda um, because it has the server implementation, because it's nice, you have, uh, can have a hosted Manda server. So you don't have to um, care for the server yourself. Um, it's always up to date. It's always on the new stand. No mess on your side. That's really cool for us because uh, maintaining an embedded device and embedded software with Yocto is hard enough. No need to do the server side um, too. And next point, continuous integration. There are as well different uh, ways to do continuous integration. Um, all in all, it's possible to work with all of them. I personally did Yocto with uh, GitLab and GitHub. In this project, in this internal project, we go with the GitLab CI because we internally use GitLab as a self-hosted solution and our internal IT gives us um, shared runner that are capable to build Yocto. They are ready, they have a cache, they can uh, cache the state. And it's really easy for us to just use this. 
and to be fair, from the uh, named ones, uh, GitHub, uh, GitLab is from my point of view the best one. GitHub is not that nice to use that GitLab is from my point of view. And yes, I named continuous integration, but what's about continuous delivery and continuous deployment? Um, for us, we don't want to have continuous deployment on our embedded devices. It's not an app. We don't want to have this uh, going completely automated. But uh, Yocto with the CI pipeline on Git lab gives us deployable artifacts. We can um, just upload them in Manda, which makes rolling out easy, which uh, enables us to roll out on test devices first. So uh, that's not that bad. And we have not um, some stress with bad updates and failing states. And it's embedded, you don't update it every week, mostly rather once a month and then uh, the manual update is completely okay for us. And last point, um, we want a vendor independent system on all levels. And with all I named to this point, we can reach this. Hardware uh, can be changed or operated in parallel easily, especially when using CAS and the CAS configurations. Yocto makes this easy too. We have various options on the software side, as uh, I named previously. You have various options for the app, for the update system, for the ICD, and if Yocto breaks, we could even switch to build root, but we won't. And yes, all in all, switching component is never effortless, but it's more easy uh, possible without dropping the whole stack as we needed to do when switching from Android things. Um, now just a short note to the app side. Um, on this uh, project, we use Flutter. Um, and that's not the baddest option for embedded with Yocto because there are Flutter embedder, um, just like Flutter Pi or Sony has an embedder. They render the UI directly on the GPU. So there's no need to build and ship um, a display system like XL, Rayland, or something else. You don't have to mess with JavaScript, web browsers, and something, uh, this stuff in Yocto. And that's really a mess. It keeps the complexity of Yocto a bit uh, away from the app devs because um, we built this in a container. And the container makes it also easy to, uh, to do updates, to change. And the uh, app devs are happy with it. So from all Yocto projects I maintain currently, um, the Flutter Embedder is my uh, most loved software on the app side. And now we can have a look how it looks today. We have uh, in the left the main Yocto repository, uh, repository, what a bad word with CAS. This includes already Manda and SPDX. Then we have our Innovex repository where we do uh, all stuff specific to us. This repo is uh, able to trigger the main Yocto uh, project CI via some uh, GitLab magic. 
the same uh, is true for the Flutter rep, uh, repo. Um, then we have the Yocto image pipe. The image is um, manually uploaded to the Manda update server. And the image on the device in field pulls its app image from a container registry in GitLab where the Flutter app um, deploys its artifacts. So not the easiest uh, setup, but it works quite well and um, really valid for an embedded device. And now I have some details on our cars. Um, I think there are several ways to organize something. For me, it's really cool because I have here a config directory, some uh, stuff beside mid image signing and so on. Also the CI uh, file itself. And I have um, some development files for uh, cars. I have a base uh, YAML I have for all the devices I am um, currently using own configuration so I can do the um, in parallel really easy. And when doing a release, I can just, um, for example, do a new folder, copy in there um, which files I use for the release and use um, specific commit hashes in there as, as a ref stack, while I use um, the, the branches in the development files. Yocto CI, I have just a, a short, um, short part of it. It's also really nice and short with CAS. I split the cast build in two steps in the checkout and the actual build because it allows me in the CI to replace um, some placeholders with actual keys for the deployment. Um, there's of course more in the CI, but I don't want to share it right now. Um, see the previous talk. If you want to see more about uh, Yocto and CI, it was great. And one of the nice things I want to share is um, how to trigger one uh, repo from the another one. This makes this whole um, CAS Yocto magic work for us. Um, just click on this link on the slides, they're online. Um, works well and makes this work really cool. And here, um, just a quick overview how this container registry looks like. Um, yes, they're old because uh, it's just a screenshot of the um, top part of it. And here have a short screenshot of how Manda looks like. We have really a lot of devices right now. You can see we have um, currently um, different software states deployed. Okay, it's a bit an older screenshot. Now um, we're updating everything to Kirkston currently. Um, you can see I have some test devices. We have uh, devices um, grouped by their uh, location. And when you update something, it looks a bit like this. Um, I defined which group I want to update and this group is currently one device, which uh, becomes updated with what I put in there. And all in all, the result looks like this. We have two rooms here. Um, I think uh, the UI is not really good, visible, really um, contrasting on this image. It's a bit better in real life, but I think I have to uh, hit the web depths a bit 
to make it a bit better readable. But all in all, it's really nice, works well, and it's really a, a plus for us. And in the end, I want to share some learnings and recommendations. Um, yes, be aware, Google um, is known to bury a lot of their projects. And even if you start something as a student project, it might grow and it's really cool. So you want to use it longer. And if Google buries, you have uh, a lot of work to switch to something else. So always have a backup plan. If one of your components become uh, obsolete and prepare a uh, some time to switch over. Um, even if you do something or start something as an internal project um, with students, involve your internal expertise. Um, use such, uh, such projects not only for students, um, but also for uh, your employees to test new things, as I did with CAS. So they can get confident with it before using them in real world. And as my last words, building and maintaining an embedded system is always a huge amount of work and you need really a wide range of expertise um, on all these levels. So never underestimate this. So a uh, short uh, ad slot for my company. Um, you can find more um, from this on this channels. There's also a blog article about um, this displays. It's also um, published on the Menda blog. And then thank you.